Thank you for being here. <laughs> no kidding? Yes. Bill Rick. Emily Sell? Here. Chair of Supervisor? Yeah. Emergency Management? Round A, you're still in the house? Sure am. And LPC. We do. Okay, great. All right, Secretary's report. Did everybody get a copy of the minutes that wanted it? I see some corrections. There was a motion to accept the minutes as printed. <laughs> Wait a second. Did you hear a correction? Oh, I, have, no. I have corrections. Oh, you do. I'm sorry. You didn't hear that. <laughs> uh, post was spelling as well. Right? <clears throat> and then on the back, the attendance, agency attendance. I don't see calendars on there. But it's on the in the in the names. Oh, How does that? Got it. Okay. Name. Right. Okay. That's the only two corrections that I saw. All right. With the corrections being made, um, all in favor signify by saying aye. Anybody second it? Second. Yeah. Deal. Deal. All right. Everybody in favor, say that you're fine by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Terry, <laughs> Treasurer's report. As of yesterday, May 21st, 2024, our checking account has $3,357.80. Our savings is at $6,000 even for a grand total of $9,357.80. I sent out the coming dues, um, and I also included a self-addressed envelope, and I received all but Francis Crick is not current, Kellnersville is not current, Michigan and Greensville. And then there was, I think Mark was going to address the issue with Valders. Or did, yes. Uh, okay. I'll do that. Uh, she sent out the invoices. And received a letter back uh, from Valders Fire and Rescue that we no longer are part of this association. We removed ourselves in 2022, hence why we have not paid any deed. And it's signed Chief Christopher Valders. They were delinquent by three years. So what? Why aren't they part of the association? Um, we never received any kind of letter stating that they didn't want to be in the association or any reasons. We don't know that. Dr. Martins, do you want to touch that or do you want to let it alone? I'm not aware of this transaction. <laughs> <laughs> or at least the declaration of this transaction. Dave to say that we can follow up, you would follow up for it. I can ask the chief his statement and what it, it said it, it went back to when? 2022? Yes. It isn't a thing and it's not being an organization. Do they belong to another association? Not that I'm aware of. They're part of our EMS committee with emergency management. I would think they have to be part of the association. Well, I, I, I don't think there's anything stating that you have to be a member. Um, but, um, Dr. Martins, if you could just add, if they could send us an official letter stating that they don't wish to be a member anymore, at least we kind of like some idea of what what is going to go on with them. And you had just said that there is no like rules of participation. And 
No. No. It was kind of automatic that any. Yeah. No, there's, there's that if you're an EMS organization in the county, that you would automatically be a member. Correct. Is there any other organization that is opted out? No. No. Okay. Although last year when they did post the EMS meeting, like last year, right? Yeah, they did post last year, and it actually historically, Manitowoc County EMS Association um, chief leader back in the time was a major. Advocate the major founding power. Yes. So my thought is that we would ask them to reconsider that because this is the group, the place where your former chief. <laughs> and it's so easy to see together. <laughs> my two cents were. All right, we'll move on from that then. Um, <laughs> And the county sheriff department. Uh, we have nothing really to pass on. Um, there were some promotions within the sheriff's office, but Cody mentioned uh, the public comment. Our chat the sheriff's office uh, from uh, bonding people in the locations. Thank you. Yes, I jumped over. Joint dispatch center. Rhonda, you have the floor. Um, and the, I have the full scale emphasize and EMR resource listed, but if you have anything else prior to that, go ahead. Um, I, I didn't quite exactly hear what you just said. I um I heard of something about full scale. Um we yes. are still Yes, I I stated I have it listed on the agenda about the full uh, full full scale exercise, and we'll be using the EMR uh, EM resource um, system for patient accountability. That's correct. There are a couple departments that uh, are new to this, uh, and they want to test it, test it out. I have a committee formed. I'm going to set up a meeting for that uh, committee to start getting the ball rolling on this full scale exercise. If I haven't, or if you haven't heard, it's a exercise F3, F4 tornado. It's going to come through Manitowoc. It's going to head towards the lake um, because NOAA Weather wanted to be a part of this and they wanted to get um, uh, the Coast Guard involved because it's going to affect the lake and marine type Cleveland said that they wanted to spin off on our exercise and have a uh, school bus overturn on some railroad tracks which is great um, I plan on involving every kind of community partner that we have in Manitowoc County because we have not had a full scale um, of this magnitude for a, a few years outside of the nuclear program so that's my super big project for the year. And I I can't hear you. Do you have a date set? No, that's what the committee is going to decide. We want to try to plan it so that we're not interfering with Bill Manis's RTF exercise. Um, and as far as joint dispatch, we have two positions that um, we've interviewed for and they've passed the tests. So we're bringing them in to see if they want a shadow and if the job is okay for them. And, and we'll be hiring for those two positions. Michelle Hurley, if you don't know her, has completed 29 years of service and she is retiring. I believe her retirement party is the 28th, maybe the 29th. They have to look it up. It's at the EOC. So, um, and then we had one vacancy where somebody left for uh, another position. But that's pretty much what we have in emergency management and joint dispatch. 
Thank you, Rhonda. You're welcome. Um, just mentioning the EM resource, does everybody know about it? <clears throat> um, Google, um, it's, you can get set up. You have to apply and get a sign in and all that stuff, but um, it's, uh, Oh, oh yeah, I'll just give you a lot more than it's it's they all know about it. it's statewide a tool that they're trying to <coughs> the state wants an official everything, you know, official tracking system and official <coughs> radio frequency. And this is the tool they think they want for patient accountability. In theory. You put a bracelet on with a barcode at some level of pre hospital, whether it's EMR or even EMP, medic, whatever, ambulance. And that's how you track your patients. That's one of the components of it. And then the other component is where the places where you know to transport your patients to put in their availability. So, like the Lord Trubers would tell you if there was a disaster right now. They can take one red to the yellow and then 23 for the family to put in one red or whatever to the yellow another 23. But it also lets you look at because it's a curved region. Um, it would also have over a base there can St. Vincent, so St. Mary, and um, so you can just technically write the low armor cut off, but you can click screens and pull up shadow and you can see um, click screens again and you can see the Kelly Pass and the Lackets. It's web based. You um, come up with a Which is one of the drawbacks that the state doesn't like to hear us talk about because these are the places that make up on the real get salary. But it is something that they're having more and more drills with and playing with more and more. And I think they're seeing some of the correct me if I'm wrong, their interoperability challenges that they don't want to. On paper, it's a great thing. It's a neat program, how it should work and could work. Um, mm -hmm. um, for my other job at the hospital, it's a big job to get that and put it in and to keep it current. And it's no use to you if you're coming in from here with a disaster and trying to figure out where to go or for you, your transportation person at a disaster. If my numbers are correct. So it needs to be on the hospital side, it needs to be a person, a, almost a dedicated person. And in the middle of a disaster, it has to be a one to one. Mm -hmm. And then you have to have time and the ability on your end to manage your laptop and your computer program and understand what you're looking at. Now, Lori and Amy and Mark. And all together for EMRs, they can put the bracelets on. But if the scanners aren't in the ambulance when you transport them out, then we have to go back to plan B, which is how we used to do it with the triage tape number. So that's where your triage tapes and that some of those triage tapes can save them that are going. It sounds great out there. There's um, tapes for it. If there is in your operability issue. Oh, so I think that's, but they they keep saying, so like the federal government works, like you learned. So if there's anything I've learned over the last 30 years is if you want the free money, that's what it takes. So if you want a grant, you have to drill with the stuff because this is what the state says is the answer. So if you want any money like from your herd or from your IPAC or from the federal state or federal government, you have to try and drill. You have to try and participate in it. You know, give them feedback and that. 
That's why you want people on your stacks and your herbs and your other places like this that understand what it's like in the field because the massive bolts are a little pile removed from each of the Not that they're not wonderful people and very smart and all that kind of stuff like that, but they don't see some of the challenges that we So it's a cool thing that Rhonda wants to do with it. It's something that's going to make a good checkbox in the emergency government thing on our end. There's going to be things like and things that make me want to pull over here. But unless we try it, it oh, depends where they roll their box over here. That's when we moved to that one fire and see if they can help. A home, we couldn't use a radio to run up the hill. And so communications were slow or not at all. But it's a good if you don't try it, you don't have anything to access. To you. But like Mark said, Google it. They'll set you up if you guys want to play with it, if you want to look at it. If there's any way to make it work for you, they went as far as putting on places like Brown Hunter Mental Health, Bell and Psych. Some of the nursing homes are on there, places where we would overflow to in a disaster. Places where if you had to board people, you know, they were displaced or something. So in theory, what they have scoped out is pretty nice. How current it is and how we can use it are work in progress, but there's some really cool things to like, go to that tree. Mobile resource. Yeah. Hey Mark. Yes. One of the neat features I like about it, even though I'm not in EMS or healthcare anymore, I signed up for it anyway. Um, it gives me daily reports on how many hospital beds are available per facility and pertinent information so that if there were to be a disaster, the more people that have that information, um, the better it is to get those patients out to the hospitals you knowing how many beds they have available or do they need to reroute to somewhere else. And I also like the uh, potential patient tracking where if they are rerouted to somewhere else, it's just a matter of scanning that barcode and that patient is tracked 100% via electronic versus relying on somebody to fill out paperwork and receiving or transporting. I think that's going to be a wonderful feature for all of you guys. Thank you, Rhonda. All right. I also, they have webinars that you can watch and listen to. And um, I forget her name right now, but she's very resourceful. Um, I was actually going to try to contact her. Uh, I kind of did her ready that uh, I think that she's going to willing to come up for a meeting and, and Tell us all of its features and everything else and how it's used. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Anything else about that? Otherwise, we'll go to protocols. Um, uh, Dr. Martin, do you have anything on protocols right now? Nothing new or concrete at this time. Okay. Well, I know that uh, we have talked that Dr. Sarah was going to get together with all the medical directors and see if they can get coordinate the, uh, for the whole county or how they were going to plan to use it. That we can update the ones that we have online right now. All right, we'll move on to when we went through the disaster training for 2024. Um, RTF, um, uh, there was one on May 13th. Anybody uh, have any kind of an update with that one? I guess I went with relatively well. Um, the next one was August 13th at Talbot Rivers. Um, then there's one on August 19th, the Cleveland fire. And 
Then there is a county-wide one, September 13th, um, at Manitowoc City Hall. That's now what you want to go drill. Okay. But you're going to be calling for help? Don't know. It's bananas. Okay. <laughs> what is that? So we can get some uh, that would be uh, September 13th. Friday. Yeah. At 2100 would be 5 o'clock. Friday the 13th. Friday the 13th. Nice. I'll be trying to go. I was going to say, I need this lecture. Yeah, I'm going to All right, education training. I think we got that covered. Um, <coughs> medical directors. Dr. Barnes, do you have anything else? Um, nothing pressing. Um, I don't remember if the last time um, the state, if the state um, scopes update had come through, it has very little, if no changes. There were just some typos that were at um, the BLS and intermediate level. There were a few rearrangements at the ALS slash paramedic level but it really does not affect functioning as much. So they're out, they're not very exciting, and that's it. Thank you. Uh, radio, um, is it me or is everybody experiencing that the radio is garbage? It's, I mean, it's as bad as I know. I bet they have 42 years. So um, I don't know what they can do about it. Um, next. Uh, are they continuing to do the, the pre alert with the addresses? Yes, and that they are. They are. Some of them are doing it, and some of them are. I've noticed that. And that's obviously a dispatch, you know. Pre alerts are going to be around. Yeah, right. And that's good. I like, I like that. I think it's a training thing. Right. Especially those that have been there while I'm speaking from my experience. Right. That you're so used to doing it one way, right. now you have to read or something. Right. No. So and I, I just, I didn't know if they were trying to get away from it or, you know, if the things that, okay. Yeah, we're, we're still trying to do the uh, address with the pre alerts as well yep. as the status, the A through E. We want to get that out right away too. And it is, it's, it's a matter of getting the senior people back into a new routine. And I noticed after our meeting uh, that we had that uh, I know the city has been really good now at telling us that they're on their way and what unit it is. Or when they were on CAD, we didn't know who or if they were even coming. So that helped a lot. It helps us. Um, Mavis, I don't have any young needs on Mavis. Um, our tender, Kirk. Um, I hope you're watching your sites. This is end of the calendar year, so money has to be gone by June. Both organizations look at their um, requirements and stuff like that. So. Otherwise, we try to make sure you have all the websites and stuff like that. But over the last five years, we've definitely got more money down from Manitowoc County to get away. The same people using that. Um, so thank you for our participation. Our tag has their um, meeting coming up again. Yep. Uh, LTC, I saw, uh, I think an updated schedule is out. Um, so, if anybody needs that. Uh, all right, uh, update on the Manitowoc County Association mutual aid agreement and the mass casualty plan. 
have been updated. Thank you for all your hard work, Rhonda. And um, I sent that out to everybody. Hopefully everybody might have read it. Uh, there was some changes. Um, uh, the visual impact was uh, cleaned up. There were some wording issues and um, uh, then uh, the signature pages was uh, completed with everybody on there. So um, Rada was going to be sending those out to the officials and if we're getting them signed up. The EMS casualty plan, they, uh, we went through that pretty much paragraph by paragraph and cleaned that up also. Um, I guess the only thing that we were looking for, Ron, is where those main kits are. The bleed kits? Yes. Uh, well, the disaster boxes. Oh. Um. Wasn't there right. one part of it that um, they were listed out at different departments and um, I don't think that's what even has theirs anymore. Are they they're complaining about they're so old that the uh, best stand up by themselves and stuff like yeah, that? Yeah, that's true. Um, every department had one. Most all the departments did say that they probably still have them. They don't throw anything away. They're probably back in a storage closet somewhere. Um, I guess with that, we just need to figure out, does every department need to have one or can we kind of go through them and centralize them in like one or two different locations? Not every department has one. Yeah, they only went to ambulance services and we scattered them throughout the county. And those were county EMS equipment. So I hope nobody threw them out because in theory, we could restock them and redeploy them. I mean, that's the good thing you go to would probably be better out than you did. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess. Oh, yeah, they were, yeah. We should we should probably gather them up, see what's in them, you know, it's, how good the material what, is. Yeah, see what needs to be replaced or updated or whatever. Yeah, and then redistribute, and then we can then, then we we can record that in the, in the plan. That sounds great. All right, I'll put that on the agenda for the EMS committee meeting. Okay. What's this on the trailer? The mass casualty trailer. I thought that's where some of those items went. Yes. Mm -hmm. We have the uh, two rivers, I think, is where we were, where we have the all of that. Yes. We really haven't seen that. I just have to ask Bill because I know we didn't put all those boxes in the trailer. Yeah. The only problem with that is, is that. The best trailer will take a while to. I I don't deny. I just didn't know where all those other items were pulled. Oh okay, yeah, yeah. That I do not know where. where I they thought those were some of those actually ended up pulled. Do you know what they just went out here, Paul? I don't think there's one. Actually, I know there's not one in this building. I we just went know. through. What the I just said. I never came across the giant. Okay. Yeah, yeah. because it's a yeah. A, I think we all brought ours to two rivers at that time, didn't we? And we went through I, them and we reloaded the mass casualty trailer yeah. out of them. And then it was going to be restocked and brought back out. If my memory serves me correct. But I don't believe I, we have received ours back. Okay, I remember, yeah, I remember talking about that. So I have to check yeah. with two rivers then. I guess. Yeah. yeah. Some reason, I'm thinking that I wrote it in the back of my truck and all the over there. There were six things. I believe so. This is I don't think you guys want to watch us. 
Yeah. I know you have, I know you have, but I don't think it's a common one. Yeah. It's a clear one. Ours is clear. We've got a bunch of them. It's probably made up your own. But it's got, you know, yeah. It's yeah. like yeah. a sweet one. Yep. We made up our own too. Right. But it's yeah, we don't have what it's called. I don't think it's a black one. I just remember throwing it in the field. Okay, he took two things. I Why I remember that, I don't know. <laughs> well, maybe you guys have one. Because if you ever beat it out, you knew you could get out. Oh, yeah, because yeah. oh, I, I, I couldn't pick it myself. No, it was not a pick it up, but then you're going to fucking go. Right. Yeah. 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 All right. Uh, probably everybody knows that this is PMS week. I guess Trevor says the open house tomorrow and Friday. All right. Uh, new business. Anybody on any other old business? Okay. All right. Uh, EMS Association, thank you very much for the beautiful gift baskets you delivered to us during Telecommunicator Week. We appreciate, appreciate it and truly enjoyed the abundance of treats. JVC dispatchers. All right. So, any other old business? Other ones going to new business? Uh, Vice President elections. Uh, nominations. I did not receive any more nominations, so that is still open. But I did get a request to bring up a possible change to the bylaws with how the election procedure is uh, presently run. Uh, right now, uh, the president uh holds a two-year term and then is replaced by the elected vice president um and then we elect another vice president that two years later becomes the president so what a i just don't i hear ideas I, are. I was talking to a couple other people from different agencies and they just don't want to commit to being president. They they would take you know. I know that okay. because I would do the the vice president. I I will not do presidency. I that's just too much, and that's why I think that's why John Bailey stepped out because it was, it was just too much, you know. And the fire the fire association doesn't even correct me if I'm wrong. Fire department doesn't even do that with curated with your association. Correct. Yeah, it's like individually elected on Correct. There's not a succession, no succession plan. I think it's like right. Correct. Right. Where it's for vice president, and then we they you guys jump into it's you don't do that. Each one is voted on the center. Correct. Correct. And that's I think that's what we should do here. Where I think nobody wants to commit to it's a four-year term. Yeah. Essentially, essentially a four-year term. And well, it doesn't have to be a four year term, it could be a two year term, but but if you're going from vice president to two if years, you could, if you do each one separately, you could do it two years. Right, the way it's being yeah, but if you're making a commitment for four years, when you the way, like Lori just said, the way it stands now, you're you're committed for four years, and that's I don't I don't believe that people want to do that for four years. I, I sure don't. <laughs> so, do anybody got? Do you want to change the bylaws, or if we're going to put the bylaws and be okay. okay. So, should we get a bylaw committee together? Who wants to get a bylaw committee? Together? What is the bylaws around the county website? 
put yes. it out there. Let's put it out there in a minute. Put it out there to few people. Because we have such a huge attendance. Um, look at it. Rena, we were talking more about changing how many meetings we have. Um, we're talking now about should everybody in the organization be in there? If we're going to open it for one thing, this is a 30 year old back. This has we're never been modified to the best of my Maybe it was one time. Uh, no, there's actually five amendments. It was amended in 94, or 05, or 07. Amended or read? Amended. It's pretty sketchy. It might have been just changing you. I'm just saying, maybe some term change. Yeah, that's probably it. But the intent and purpose of the document was put together to change something like the elections. Major. Can we get, do you guys have access to a Swedish boy ladies or elements or something else is resting. Yep. Well, you can see after Martin's with Slides. Oh, happy that. Yeah. We asked for nice. Wiggins is very interesting. There's very, very detailed, very, very in depth. Very detailed. Kind of thing that happened. What is, what is the boy doing? Sheboygan has an EMS council made up of individuals like us, but an EMS association. But then they have a county EMS council that's made up of um, some from the sheriff's department, law enforcement, fire chiefs association. It's it's quite a diverse group that actually helps set the policy on EMS response in the county. Um, so like a recent one they were looking at for their maintenance, let's report it. Um, looking at first responders not going on any alpha and making that a county wide. So you have both medical directors in there. It's it's a very to your point. It's a very different approach to you. Not saying it's bad. It's no. just very different. Yep. So there's a lot of non-EMS looking at the EMS. The, the difference you want to look at, when, that's one of the reasons why Manitoba County doesn't seem to repress ever. That's where split how we look at things that way. There's many uh, municipalities and townships that run as a fire EMS based type service. Yet I understand that they are still organized separately, but I think we could be much more powerful as a county if we could just take down some of those barriers and not separate ourselves from the others. So I would say kudos to Sheboygan, Kenosha County, Milwaukee County, and Many other counties I could think of that have exactly that, where it is an actual EMS council and it consists of uh, firefighter paramedics, consists of just EMR if they have that, or private ambulance, I mean, whatever. It's all a part of it. Um, they speak that way. It's just, I think one of the concerns that I see here at Manitowoc County is just we're very fragmented that fire and EMS really don't have a chance to look at radio problems, don't have a chance to look at many other things. And the time commitment too, when you're like, understand you completely, you don't want to be tied up in it, right. but, um, you know, that's why sometimes your leadership within some of these organizations are the ones that should be at these meetings. And um, I really don't want to send a fair fighter paramedic here and make decisions based upon what they feel the night of the meeting, but we kind of are backwards here. And I think that might be some frustration for some other organizations that don't participate here. Um, Definitely a collaborator, but I've seen too much here through the 12 plus years that um, we're not helping ourselves at all here uh, in Manitowoc County and still fragmented. And uh, really, I think both sides need to come together and really have a little bit more say within county government and county politics and, and so forth. So, and you're only going to do that with a unified voice, and not different factions coming at them from different associations. And we're very blessed already have the sheriff's department involved in both fires. So, I mean, I think there's a huge example of just how important it is for fire and EMS to come together. I mean, I applaud the sheriff for having representation at two different county meetings like this. I mean, I'm sure it's not easy, but um, I think we could help ourselves and help others as well. 
Thanks for listening. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for the time of the meeting. We're going to take one hand, but what I, so there. what I might recommend is maybe the executive board currently for the EMS Association getting together with the executive board of the uh, Manitowoc County Firefighters Association. I think you're going to find that the same concerns that you hear there are the same concerns that you'll hear here. Um, but just the same, it comes down to not want to relinquish a little bit of that piece of the pie or pride or whatever it is, but um, maybe you guys could be the uh, leaders and see where it might go from there. Mm -hmm. All right, anybody have anything else for this meeting? Next meeting is on July 24th at 7 o'clock at 10 o'clock. I'll let you know where you <laughs> have a crowd like this, we can maybe hold it on the USS Bowie up here. There we go. I'll listen to music from the Lord. There you go. <laughs> there. Just, just for training, we can do battle stations. <laughs> <laughs> we'll pretend two rivers is invading. Yeah, All right. Anybody else have anything else? Otherwise, I need a motion to adjourn. Second. 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 Okay. Everybody in favor? Aye. Opposed? We are adjourned. Okay, we'll call the meeting to order. We'll have roll call. Branch. Here. Cleveland. Allen. Francis Gray. Here. Ready for me. Yeah. Hello, friends. Who's there? Sam Davidson's. Oh, yeah. We're here. <laughs> Bring it still. Two friends. Here. Mr. Pat.